Okay, let's look at an example of how to work out circular motion problems. Let's say we have a car which is turning without sliding. Okay? The turning radius is given to us to be 50 meters and we want to find what is the maximum speed at which the cart can turn without slipping or sliding okay that is what our goal is a top view of the car will look like let's say this is a car and it is making a turn this means it is traversing a circular kind of arc with a circ with a radius a turn radius of r equals 50 meters okay and this is what the motion looks like since it is moving in a circle we know that there must be a centripetal acceleration directed towards the center what is the free body diagram in this situation we can use the front view of the car to help visualize the free body diagram from the front we can note that the weight of the car is acting vertically downward and due to the tires being in contact with the ground the ground exerts a normal force on the tires called n and since there is a centripetal acceleration that is an acceleration that is pointed towards the center as the car turns there must be a centripetal force causing that motion okay our this is our free body diagram with the axis chosen as plus x going to the right and plus y going to the upward direction now what is this centripetal force what kind of force is it well what is the force between the tires and the road which keeps the car from sliding that is friction okay so without friction the car would could not turn without sliding because there is friction between the tire tires and the car tires and the road that's why we know that the car has the possibility of turning safely so the centripetal force is nothing but the friction that exists between the tires and the road and it is directed in the direction of the center of the curvature that the car is turning or more simply this force causes a centripetal acceleration which is directed towards the center hence the frictional force will be directed towards the center of the turn okay so this is the direction of the friction hence this centripetal force is nothing but the frictional force that exists between the tires and the car. What kind of friction is it? Is it static or kinetic? Well, since we are considering situations of without sliding motion, then at the point of sliding, when it's just about to slide, we will get the maximum speed. When does this maximum speed occur? This occurs when the frictional force or the static frictional force is a maximum so if you go beyond the static friction you the car will slip and slide and cannot turn safely so at a maximum value for the friction we will get the maximum speed now let's write down our Newton's second law equations what do we have in the x direction in the x direction summation of fx equals m a x we know in the x direction we have only one force friction static friction and the acceleration is centripetal acceleration okay so we write f s equals mass times a c now we also know that let's change uh, our colors here we also know that a c the centripetal acceleration has magnitude given by v squared over r 
v square v is the speed of the object that is turning r is the turning radius in this case then this becomes mass times replace ac by v squared over r let's call this equation one what do we have in the y direction in the y direction the summation of forces in the y direction is equal to m times a in the y direction however the car is not jumping up and down so acceleration in the y direction is zero so the right side of the equation is zero that means the two forces in the y direction the normal force and the weight are balanced that is they're equal to each other so we can say that n is equal to mg let's call this equation two so how does this equation help us well this helps us in that we know that frictional static friction is has a definition that looks like this static friction is less than equal the static coefficient times the normal force now for maximum static friction we use the equal sign so when we get rid of the less than sign mm -hmm. and we we are uh, left with fs equals m s a mu fn that means we are getting the maximum value of static friction friction static friction cannot get any bigger than fs max equals mu s times the normal force now what is the normal force normal force is just mg in this case so we can write mu s is known to us as given in the question which i probably didn't mention mu s is 0.9 so we can write friction maximum value of static friction is 0.9 times mg okay let's call this equation 3 now wherever you see fs replace fs with 0.9 mg so we can see fs in equation 1 so we can replace by fs max here so in place of fs we can just plug in 0.9 times mg let's do that so here we manipulate equation 1 in place of fx fs we have 0.9 times mg equals m times z squared over r however we didn't know the mass of the car but it turns out we didn't need it since in both terms on the both sides of the equation we have the same mass the mass of the car we can divide them out so the masses go away we are left with 0.9 times g which is 9.8 equal to v squared over r we want to find what v is actually we want to find what v max is since we are using the maximum value of friction you will get the maximum value of the speed so that means v max squared is equal to 0.9 times 9.8 times r the radius if we square root both sides we get the maximum speed so r is given to you as 50 which leads to a maximum speed of 21 meters per second okay this is the maximum speed with which the car can turn just about to slide or the car can turn just safely okay